Welcome back, everyone, to our epic conclusion of our interview with Eric Nenninger. So we uh, we all go through this. We all go through this, and you were telling us about your, your trials and tribulations. Yeah. What was it, Eric? What was it that that made you go? Uh, I can't quit this. What was it that made you go, this is what I do, this is who I am? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I think I think I was fortunate enough to just know that I always wanted to be an actor, whether it was working or not working. And so it was more like, how can I pay my bills and then still find somewhere to act? And so I, I was like, okay, if this is not working, I'll go to theater, at, at free theater, you know what I mean? Um, I just always have to do it. I don't have a backup plan. Um, and so that probably really scared me at that point, you know, mm. but, um, I think if you're going to do this, you have to be prepared to do it for effort, you know, in some sense, like you have to say, I'm always going to be an actor. I just may not be a successful actor, you know, quote unquote, I may not be a television working actor, you know, Who's well, what's, yeah, actor? yeah. What's, <laughs> yeah. what's success? Yeah. I mean, you know, getting up in the morning, going, doing what you love to do every day and getting paid for it and yeah. not having to go and flip hamburgers or make Subway sandwiches that I think, or that, put know, some fries in or the bottom of the bag, <laughs> fries in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> you know, I'm going to fire her. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I wanted to do it. And so it was just a matter of whether or not I was going to do it on the weekends after I worked my job or I was going to continue doing it like this and, and, Fortunately, it worked out, you know. And as cliche as it sounds, it's, it's, um, you don't choose it. Yeah, it is a cliche, you, but you're right. You, you don't this choose This is what it. I do. It's the only thing that I'm good yeah, at, you, you, you know, and yeah. I love it so much. I would be miserable not gotcha. doing it than trying and not being successful at it. Because I'm not really good at saying potatoes or pilaf, sir. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> exactly. that really and I've bothers. tried that. So, yeah. so what is auditioning like for you now, and how has it changed? Because it, 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 it's got to be different now than, than oh, yeah. it was... I mean, everything is, is done at your house over self-tapes. And I had done self-tapes before, you know, occasionally, but it was probably 30% of my auditions, 20% of my auditions, and now it's 100%. Um, some of them are Zoom auditions where they'll be actually on there, but now acting over Zoom is a thing. Um, so that's a challenge that we have to adjust to, which every single person in the world is having to adjust to in some manner. So I try to remind myself that. I was supposed to test for a pilot on March 13th, 2020. Um, and I was, I was gonna get it. <laughs> they had gone through all the offers. I had a great rapport. It was one of the, you know, this amazing audition. It fit like a glove. And they were like, just show up on time and we'll give you this part. March 13th, you know, anyway, it got postponed and we, I'm still waiting to hear from them. Um, but I had to remind myself that there were Olympic athletes that were going to go to the Olympics. There were parents that, uh, you know, had a business that was about to grow. So everybody's going through this right now. I have to, instead of walking into a room and taping there, tape it in my house. Unfortunately, I have a house. Okay, so you can't, don't cry me a river for, you know, what happened to my industry. Now mm -hmm. with self-tapes, what I miss, and I was speaking to my wife about this, is the magic that happens in the room. Because a lot, especially with comedy, because I primarily would audition for comedy, is that I can't recreate that as much as I can with other people in the room. I also can't recreate the excitement of a new person in the room. So I have to learn how to do that. I gotta figure it out. Um, there's benefits to it, you know what I mean? Uh, you mm -hmm. can do it when you want on your own time. <laughs> I don't have to leave early uh, yeah. and worry about traffic or anything. But you we got to adjust. Yeah, yeah, I can be in my underwear from the bottom yeah. down. Like, is it a tight close up? Keep it up here. Yeah. Um, I'm in my underwear now. Which oh is wow! Great. Wow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so all you do right now is you 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 self tape auditions. You upload them to Vimeo and you send your agents a link, and then you don't really hear that much right now, um, which is disappointing for me because I love the room. You know, right. in all honesty. How do you keep those relationships up, you know, like with the producers and stuff? I mean. Yeah, the producers are hard because I don't see them or hear from them. The casting directors, I still know that that's who I'm sending the tapes to. And so I'm just trusting that by taking care of all the things that I can take care of and not letting mistakes that are going to happen affect me too often. So I follow all the instructions that they're asking for. I make sure that I turn in the tape on time. I give them um, what I would normally do in the room in the sense that it's very specific to the type of show that it's supposed to be, but it's also got 
like Eric Nenninger on it, mm. you know, and I try to make it as clear and consistent so that they can take that tape and show it to the producers. And then I just trust that these people that I'm sending tapes to that I used to see quite often are knowing that it's me but, um, that I'm sending it in, you know. Trust. Yeah, trust. trust. There's a lot of trust in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, but we used to have this thing that's called Book the Room. Yeah. Right. So, so have you discovered how to do that on, on, on the Zoom audition? <laughs> or, 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 well, I guess it's screen. easier on Zoom. But like if you're sending in a self-tape, have you figured out yet how to, how to book the room through a self-tape? No, um, but I do. I know. No. Next question. <laughs> well, we're all struggling um, with it. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Um, what I try to do is watch them back and say to myself, is that the caliber that I would be proud of if it was normally someone else filming mm. me? Um, I'm missing the magic that happens in the room with the unexpected and the new reader. But is the tape up to the caliber that I would want it to be if I was normally doing it. So I try to make sure that I'm still working as hard. I try to make sure that I'm still crafting the audition in the creative way that I used to. The excited thing about going into the room, obviously your personality is gonna come out before you start auditioning. And I always tell actors that the audition starts when the door opens and it ends when the door closes, not when they you know start. But there's also a really cool thing about taking an audition, which is a scene from a television show and turning it into the actual audition that you're gonna do in the room. So creatively solving how you're gonna take a punch or give a kiss or you know fall off mm -hmm. a building or shoot somebody, especially with comedy too, because you can do a lot of things. So I try to do that in my tapes where I'm making this page that they sent me uh, translate to the genre that is auditioning. So I'm not, I don't use a lot of props really. I, I, I kind of keep it simple in my tapes where I just kind of use the chair. If it's a gun in the scene, I'll still use my phone, which I would always use just because I always found a lot of joy in crafting an audition for those purposes. Mm. Some of my best ones were where I kind of created a world in the little office. And I, and I hope that if I'm still doing that, mm -hmm. that that's gonna translate as well. And then just keep it up to the same standard as you had before. But I think they're disappointed too. I think casting directors are missing us as well. Um, I don't know how the producers are feeling about it because I think they were watching a lot of tapes before this. Anyway, I just, noticed that I was taping right. anyway, but um, you just you just do the best work that you can, and then hopefully um, we'll be back in rooms with each other soon. Right. Mm -hmm. So so you get the job and, and and you show up. What do you try to bring to a set? Just what is what does Eric try to bring to the set? Brian Cranston morale. <laughs> you know oh, I mean? yeah, Brian yeah. Cranston charisma, professionalism, like a warm thing. I love sets. I love crew people. I love mm -hmm. hanging out with them. That's what all of a sudden I realized that my career was because I had been on so many different shows that it was really not about this part and whether or not it was going to be good enough that I would get another part. It's really about all these guys. And I'll be like, what did we work on? And so there is a little bit of like friendly, excited morale that I like to bring to a set. Regulars who have been on the show for a long time might sort of be wearing out. It's episode 20. They're tired. Mm. It's my first episode on your show. So I'm going to bring that. I'm also going to come um, very, very, very prepared. Um, so much so that we can talk about the show uh, as if I was in the writer's room doing it. So the, the Flash is the most recent show that mm -hmm. I had done. I'm watching all seasons of The Flash. You know, I'm, I'm reading articles on The Flash before I go on to set to, to do this. Um, I'm pouring over the script because I want to know where camera angles might be. All the character stuff, all the acting stuff that you do, all the situation stuff you do, all the lines, all the moments to moments, the events that happen, the beats, all that I'm doing. But I'm also looking at the tone of the show. I'm looking at what they're doing in season six as opposed to season one. I'm looking how they go to commercial breaks because I know that on certain shows that they hold on their actors for a while and then a big lightning bolt comes right. across and that right. adds to the tone as if I was playing music with a band that I've never played with. I'm gonna see like what's the stuff that's happening that's not on the page that that makes this show so great so that when I show up, I'm like, man, episode nine of season four was awesome, wasn't it? Because oh, then, because I'm not gonna come to your house, you know, to play your music and not right. know your music. So I, I, I prepare. Right. And you are great on The Flash. Thanks, uh, and, absolutely. And that's, I never thought of that. It's, it's cause you know, when they when they cut to commercial, there's a buildup to that commercial break. There always is. Yeah. And I've never thought about thinking about that. Yeah. And there's as always an actor, you've got to. So if there's a buildup for a commercial, and again, like I was saying with an interrogation scene, if they're using that, know that you're part of a scene that is the buildup to the commercial mm. and that they're gonna cut really hard. Know the scene that they cut out of. There's little subtleties that you can find by just watching the show a bunch that when you show up, um, that respect is uh, it translates really easily to everybody if you 
know the you know know the band that you're playing with. It's so easy to like put you in a place yeah. when you know when you're yeah. when you're part of the whole. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly where you fit in this one too, and I also find that that helps out because you're not grasping at straws on where do I fit in. You're like, I'm literally the guy right before the commercial break right now. I'm going to do what they do all the time on this show that's been on for seven years. Mm -hmm. It works clearly. You've done a lot. Man, Thank you. You've done a lot. You're working constantly now. Just a lot, lot different than it was before. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this has been a hard year because I haven't had a chance to work. So you're starting to like want to get back out right, there. Right. I miss theater now too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, when are we going to get back to that? Right, because um, you were you were more of a theater actor, right? At some point, right? Well, in the that's beginning, where you came from right? Yeah, absolutely. In the beginning, I did like the big Shakespeare houses and stuff like that, and I did the little theater companies around LA, which mm -hmm. is great. I always tell people that when they say there's no theater in Los Angeles, I'm like, there's a ton of theater in Los right. Angeles. It just doesn't pay that much. As I started <laughs> to have family, at all. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by that much, I mean nothing. Um, <laughs> But I had, and I had a family, so I couldn't be out as much. I had to balance right. like what was going to work. But if, when it's all said and done, I'll probably land back there just because I like that a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I'm very, very happy and very proud of the career that I've had now. And there was a period where I was frustrated. And I think that happens with young actors where you think I'm better than this, I'm bigger than this. When's my next one? You're always looking forward like, is this job going to get me here and get me here and get me here? And what I um, have to remind myself and what I – you know, teach other actors is look back and see where you've came from and you'll know that you have a lot that you can be proud of like you've mm. been going along this road for a really really long time and every time you're looking forward and jealous of that guy that's in front of you there's somebody behind you that's probably looking at you and they might just be somebody back home that wishes they had tried being an actor mm. and they're looking at you and they're like you really did it didn't you you went out there and tried yeah. you know there's, so. there's always someone kind of behind you. That's, yeah, that's great answer. That yeah. Absolutely. And you taught for a little bit, speaking of, you brought it up a little bit. Yeah, I taught for about 10 years. Um, uh, I taught in elementary schools uh, for a while. I would go in and I would do workshops in an elementary school, and then I would do a show in their auditorium, and then I'd do another workshop. And I did that for about three years with a company called Blue Palm. And that gave me like thousands of hours of on your feet. And then I taught for about 10 years. Um, at a studio in Hollywood called Leslie Kahn, Leslie Kahn and Company. And I studied there, so that's where I got my, you know, continued to be challenged. That's where I saw other actors that were better than me. And then I taught <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of actors, um, which is great because if you can teach it, you know it. Mm. You know, and if you, can, if you don't know it, you probably can't explain it. So it really forced me to make sure that I knew exactly what I was doing, that I could tell everybody mm -hmm. about it, and, and make sure that I knew exactly what the hell I was talking about. And then I would watch other people and be like, man, that's me. That's that actor that's, psychology, that's, you know? That's, like, he thinks he's better than he is. I'm like, that was me. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. you ever gonna wait till he finds yeah. out. So yeah. he's in do, for a surprise. Do you have any aspirations ever to return to teaching? Or are you ever Yeah, gonna... I, I love it. Right now, it's been like a weird thing. Like I said, I, stopped, I stepped away from um, the studio when COVID happened because mm -hmm. the Zoom thing was really difficult for me to do and the world was burning. Um, so <laughs> I had to wait until that settled down. Um, I probably will get back in some way, you know, because mm -hmm. I do enjoy, I, I'm an acting nerd. I love talking about acting. I love reading acting books. I love, you know, acting theory. I love working on stuff with people. And so mm -hmm. if I was ever going to um, do anything other than actually act, it wouldn't be directing or really writing. It would be teaching. I loved it. I did it for 10 years. Uh, I can see myself, you know, of course, getting back to it. Right. Yeah. What, and what challenges do you still have as an actor that you're striving to overcome um there's always like insecurities there's always things that pop up like actor psychology that you know as much as i seem like i'm this happy guy who's proud of all his work and you know enjoys his place you'll start working on something and this big insecurity will pop up where you just think what am i doing this is terrible i'm never going to get this um and so it's probably that like the endurance of thinking, I'm never gonna work again, or they're um, all gonna figure uh, out I'm a fraud. Right. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm actually not good enough for the, for the series, you know, and that's why I haven't gotten it. Like those same things that popped up in me when I was 20 still pop up in me when I'm 40, and you don't know where they're gonna come out. I was doing an audition uh, two weeks ago, and as soon as I started doing it, I just locked up because I just got really insecure that it was not good enough, and then I was disappointed that it wasn't good enough because it was a role that was right for me and that I really wanted because mm -hmm. it was on a show, and then all these demons just start talking to you, Ugh. and so I think that that's the challenge that I face now is I don't know when that's going to pop up, and when it does, I'm still not perfect at handling it, you know? 
Right. It's so, overcoming that actor's ego that you've you know, got to Yeah, and we, we, we all do it. So much of this career and its longevity is psychology. It's getting your brain right, getting it clear, keeping it clear, so that you can then lend it to an entirely yeah. other person and play them. <laughs> that's yeah, a yeah, great that's, way to look at it. it. So huh. we're going to move to our rapid-fire question segment. Uh, Are you ready? Segment. I'm ready. Uh, are you ready? Bring it. Quick it's, answers. It's going to be fast. So, yeah. Do you have – okay, no, we already answered. What profession would you do if not acting? I would be the backup singer in a doo-wop band. Shuba. <laughs> okay. That is. I always wanted to yeah. be the guy that like did those cool moves in the back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, hey. What's you your dream role that. on stage? On stage? <sighs> Gosh. I don't know. Something in a Shakespeare. You know what I just read was The Winter's Tale, and there's a, this is so nerdy. The Winter's Tale, and there's a character named Camilo in it, and he, I thought that he was really like a cool small part, and I would want to play that right now. Um... Camilo. Go ahead. Camilo in the Winter's Tale. <laughs> Go ahead and play it right now. What's, uh, what's your favorite show right now? My favorite? Shit's Creek. Is what? Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Ah. Uh, great show. Great show. Great show. Uh, uh, who, who have you been most intimidated to work with? Kristen Wiig. Oof. Because mm. I was in love with everything that she was, and then I didn't know she was going to be on the show until the night before, and when I read the call sheet, because they weren't telling who was going to be playing the roles, I was like, oh, God. And I <laughs> called my wife, Angel, and I was like, it's Kristen Wiig. <laughs> it's Chris. And she's like, if you leave me, I'll understand. She's, she's something else, man. But you ever stood with her? her? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I had a oh. scene with her and I stood. Yeah. I mean, I was watching her, like, trying not to break. And then I also stood right next to her and we all did jokes. And I was like, I am doing jokes next to Kristen Wiig. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then John Hamm intimidated me a little bit only because I was a big fan of Mad Men. Oh, yeah. So when he's I was huge. Yeah. He's a brick house. A brick dude. And when I was next to Don Draper, I was like, whew. Yeah. And, and nobody's good looking next to him. Right. No. Right. It's just <laughs> no one. Yeah, I, I was at a premiere he was in and the, the room just gravitated yeah. to him. It was like, and he was not doing anything. He was just walking. I'm like, wow. Um, who do you want to work with the most? Tom Hanks. Dope. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. There you go. Uh, well, so let's move on to our final question. And That's um, your final question because it's in yellow. Yeah, that's, that's me, Joe. Yo, I asked you if you Should wanted no, it and you go, said go, no. Go, uh, go, you know, we I'm had just, a meeting about I'm these. Boys, just here to be boys. pretty. Sorry. Oof, okay. All right. So Alec Baldwin said on Inside the Actor's Studio, I can't think of any business where you learn more about yourself than this business. What have you, Eric, found out about yourself and your journey? I found out that I have like an insatiable curiosity about people. I love the way people interact, the weird things that they do, um, what drives them to do things. Like I love all people, like people that you just meet out in public that are going about their business, doing their day-to-day -day thing. I'm so interested in, in them and in wild, charactery, crazy people as well. I, I love people. I'm very, very curious about go. them. That's cool. I resonate with that greatly. That's it. And, and thank you so much for being here Thanks for here having today. me. Eric, and, it was just a pleasure. Just, Such a pleasure. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. So inspirational. And, oh, thanks. Um, check Eric out on a hundred different TV shows. He's <laughs> Every time everywhere. Every time you turn the TV on, he's there. Um, he's, there. He's, <laughs> he's just everywhere. Thank you so much again. And Joe, thank it's you. always a pleasure to be uh, with you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah.